Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. The weather is expected to turn colder into next week but will there be any snow and if so where? I'm going to try and answer those questions in a moment. However if you've experienced some frosty mornings this week you might think that the weather has already turned colder. But that's simply the result of a clearer area of higher pressure now being in charge of the weather compared with last week's gloomy anti-cyclone. And as a result, under those clear skies by night, we have seen temperatures fall away, some frost and fog patches, and in some places we'll see more frost and fog over the coming nights. But for many, actually, increasingly cloudy skies arrive over the top of this area of higher pressure from the Atlantic. That's especially for northwest Scotland, where it will be a drizzly, mild but damp start to uh, Thursday and Northern Ireland likewise seeing some thick cloud. Further south and east the cloud will be broken, there'll be some bright spells coming through, it's not a return to the anti-cyclonic gloom that we experienced last week but it is a cloudier picture compared with the last few days. 12 or 13 in the south after a chilly start and mild once again in the northwest with all that cloud coming in. The drizzly rain continues on Thursday night in Western Scotland and Northern Ireland, some cloud breaks for Eastern Scotland and more especially southern parts of the country. So again, some frost and fog forming in the south, a chilly start here, but away from the fog, actually a bright enough start. And skipping forward to Friday afternoon, little change. The fog tends to lift in the south, there'll be variable cloud coming through, mostly dry here, but there will be increasingly some damp weather into North Wales, uh, the North Midlands, Northwest England, and especially Northern Ireland and Western Scotland with an increasing breeze coming through. Now the rain in the far northwest is being caused by a weather front which will start to sink south during Friday evening. A narrow but potentially intense feature with some heavy rain and gusty winds for a short time as it sinks south and by Saturday morning it's across northern England pushing into North Wales. To the south of that it's a similar start to Saturday compared with Friday, some frost and fog but also some bright weather first thing and a lot of fine weather in the south continuing into Saturday but that front's becoming slow moving as it runs into higher pressure it marks the boundary between mild air to the south and colder air coming in from the north. And when you get these temperature contrasts, you can get areas of low pressure forming. And that looks likely for Sunday, an area of low pressure forming close to that weather front along the temperature contrasts. But different computer model simulations have different ideas about how much that low will form and how much rain will get as a result of it. What looks likely though is that Saturday will be a largely fine day for southern parts of the UK as that front in northern England and North Wales becomes slow moving. So some brightness in the south, some brightness coming through for northern areas, especially northern England later and Scotland and Northern Ireland. But also increasingly a cold wind bringing frequent showers to Scotland and Northern Ireland, especially near northwestern coasts. It will feel cold in that wind and it will be cold enough for some sleet and snow across higher parts of Scotland initially, rain at lower levels through Saturday daytime. By the end of Saturday the front is across central parts and it's going to be petering out so the rain easing for a time. But it's along that front, like I say, along that temperature boundary where we could see some uh, more widespread rain develop into Sunday. I wouldn't take this too literally, there are these differences coming through in the location and the depth of the low on Sunday but either way it looks like spells of rain will move through Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland into England and Wales mixing potentially with the cold air to give some snow over the Pennines for example mostly rain elsewhere across England and Wales. Scotland though keeps those northerly winds in the north and increasingly cold so a marked wind chill and the snow potentially coming down to lower levels but again mostly settling over hills above about 300 metres on Sunday. Increasingly windy in the northwest as well, so the risk of gales, that's going to make it feel especially cold. And either way, whatever happens with this low through Sunday, it does tend to pull away for the start of next week with the Arctic winds then becoming widespread across the UK, bringing the cold air into the far south. And by Monday, this is the most likely setup for the UK. Cold northerly wind, which passing over relatively warm seas at this time of year would pick up moisture, pick up instability where the air is rising and 
lead to frequent showers, especially for northern and northwestern coasts because of the wind direction. And those showers could come as far south as uh, the southwest of England, parts of Wales, and there'll be a mixture of rain, sleet and snow. The further north you are and the higher up you are, the more likely you'll see sleet and snow as opposed to rain. Any settling snow, most likely over the tops of the hills for England and Wales and parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland seeing mostly snow over the hills. But I think Northern Scotland could see snow settling to lower levels by this stage, such as the coldness of the air. Now this is one computer model simulation for the atmosphere for Monday. It's the most likely uh, outcome for Monday, but it's only one simulation. And over the next few days, you might see some exciting maps get posted on social media or in the press that show various parts of the UK plastered by snow next week. But it's important to remember when looking at those maps that they are just one computer model simulation of the atmosphere. And professional meteorologists don't just take one computer model simulation of the atmosphere, even if it's the snowiest or the most exciting, and say that's what's going to happen. We run the computer models dozens of times and end up with dozens of simulations of the atmosphere. And the reason we do that is because of chaos theory, the idea that subtle changes at the start of a forecast can escalate into much bigger differences by days five, six and seven. And so all these different simulations will give us an overview of where computer models are agreeing and where they're not agreeing. And so we can talk about the most likely scenarios and the less likely but still plausible scenarios for a week's time, and that's what I'm going to do now. So the dozens of simulations from the Met Office, the European model and the American model can be summed up by uh, these charts, which come out as the most likely weather patterns for next week. And there are three of these to look at. The first one has very similar conditions to the last graphic with northerly winds, showers for many, rain, sleet and snow, especially coastal parts, but some sunshine away from the showers, especially inland. And these minus twos indicate two degrees below average, so cold. This is another plausible scenario for next week. Similar sort of thing, winds coming from the north, below average temperatures, showers, some sunshine away from the showers, but low pressure a little closer to the UK. So perhaps bringing some more prolonged wintry precipitation to some areas. And the third one I want to show, which is also coming out as a plausible scenario for next week, is for an area of low pressure more widely dominant across the UK, bringing unsettled weather, bands of rain, sleet and snow, depending on where you are, with below average temperatures. So we look at these scenarios and we look at where they're agreeing and where they're disagreeing. Where they're agreeing is on northerly winds. This chart sums it up well. Each of these boxes indicates the possibility or the probability of northerlies or southerlies out to uh, 27th of November. The most recent set of model runs is on the top row and the reds indicate a high chance of southerly winds and the blues indicate a high chance of northerly winds. And that's indeed what we've got from Sunday throughout much of next week, a high chance of northerly winds across the UK, although the blues become paler later on before fading away into the following weekend. Northerly winds would indicate below average temperatures and in fact that is what we're seeing from these graphics showing the temperature trend for northern parts of the UK. Initially these red boxes which show the daytime temperature or the range of daytime temperatures are above the red line here which is the average for the time of year. Then on Sunday they drop below and as you can see they stay below. So the range of likely temperatures is below the average line throughout next week although there are one or two spikes there whiskers they're called, that just extend above the average, which gives a suggestion that not all of the model simulations have it cold for northern parts of the UK through next week. Similar for the overnight temperatures coloured in blue. Southern parts of the UK show a lot more uncertainty. The boxes are bigger, the range of likely temperatures is much larger, and some of these extend above the average line. And when we analyse what's happening for southern parts of the UK by looking at these individual model simulations of the temperature at one and a half kilometres, so not exactly the temperature that you're going to experience on the surface, but it gives an idea of the trend, there's this drop in temperatures over the weekend, and then each of these dotted lines indicates the result of one simulation out of 52. Most of those 52 keep it cold for southern parts of the UK, but there are these spikes here, which are where Atlantic milder, wetter weather takes over instead of keeping it 
cold with winds from the north. So next week, the main uncertainty actually is what happens with these Atlantic lows that contain milder air and wetter conditions. One plausible scenario is that these lows stay away and we keep the cold northerly winds with wintry showers around coast, perhaps some more prolonged wintry weather coming through and little weather fronts that come in from the north. But many places actually crisp and clear. Another outcome which is coming through in a number of simulations is for these lows to approach from the south bringing spells of rain and then bumping into the cold air and in between somewhere across the UK likely to see some more prolonged snow especially over hills but perhaps not exclusively. A slightly less likely outcome but still possible is for these lows to make more progress across the UK bringing more widespread wind and rain and bringing that mild air to most of the UK. So most of the UK ending up actually milder than average, wetter and windier. All of those outcomes are possible, but some are more likely than others. And it looks like the northerlies with some wintry weather in places are the more likely scenario. But of course, at this range, seven, eight, nine, ten days ahead, you'd never rule out other scenarios taking place as well. And as we get further into the next few days, we will, of course, be able to update you with uh, all the very latest information uh, right here at the Met Office. Bye-bye.